All right, YouTube, back in the shop this week. Uh, we have a paying customer this time. Um, I get these from now. Uh, through the summer, it's usually pretty busy for me. Uh, winter kind of dies off. Uh, I do have a paying customer this time. I'll try to flip you around here and show you what I got going on this week. I do have to have this done this weekend. Hopefully, I can get everything recorded and onto the channel. Um, we will see what happens. <laughs> um, it's gonna be an interesting one so uh something i've never done before i have a pretty good pretty good idea what i'm gonna do we'll see if it works <laughs> it's up in the air at this point all right so this is my project for this weekend um i do have to have it done uh tough truck starts pretty soon it's one of the guys we race with this is a trailer he bought for his bronco it's actually like more of a stock car trailer it had a big right here on this front portion there was a big like box for putting spare tires and stuff for like stock car uh he bought it for his full-size bronco he says it's a little narrow but his main concern is the wobble in it so if i put my foot on the front of this you can see how much uh, not really let me put you on a stand hold on He's afraid it won't hold the weight of his Bronco. Um, I think a, sorry, that was kind of going crazy there. Let me stop this and we'll uh, get a better picture. All right, so this is the trailer. Um, when it's on the jack, it's not too bad. Uh, his Bronco, I'm guessing, my tough truck's like, I think like 5,000 pounds, somewhere in there. I know a full-size Bronco's right around there, a little more probably, because um, it has a full frame where my racer is a unibody. Uh, they've been heavily reinforced to keep it a unibody because they don't like to stay together. But his problem with this is when he puts a, he's afraid when he puts his Bronco on there. You can see how much that thing wobbles. Uh, it's got quite a bit of jiggle to it. Um, I'm guessing a good portion of it is this tongue. Um, if you're going to build your own trailer, do not build your tongue out of freaking angle iron. They're just not strong enough. Uh, I'm going to try to reinforce what's here. I'm going to run some channel either on the outside or the inside. I'm not sure which way yet. Because um, what's going to happen is there is a piece of I beam right here. This is four inch I-beam. So I'm hoping what I can do is run back to here and then I'm gonna go opposite direction and we're gonna cross this trailer. Um, Cause as you saw when it was in here, there was nothing in the middle of this trailer. So here's your, that four inch piece of I-beam with a receiver so you can put a winch on it. But from there on, there's one piece here and it's like three eighths, like two by two angle. And there's nothing till the back. So I'm assuming that's where a lot of his jiggle is coming from. Uh, we'll see though. We're going to try to put several X's through here. We're going to put an X through there. An X through there at a channel. It'll all be tied together. So hopefully that'll start stiffening up this trailer. We'll see what happens. <laughs> like I said, I've never had to do this before. I worked on another trailer that a bobcat was flipped. with The, the trailer was flipped with a bobcat on. And it was really mangled. Uh, I had to actually cut it in a couple sections, pie cut it, reinforce it, and then reinforce the whole trailer with square tube to get the strength back to it. Uh, we'll see what happens with this one. This is a little different scenario because the other trailer I added, I cut all the reinforcements out of the middle because they were all bent. And I put in, I think there was 20 new ones. They were all angled. The whole trailer was angled, which is almost what this one is. Um, We'll see what happens. Uh, it's just one of them things. Um, as we go, I'll kind of show you what what I'm doing to reinforce the tongue. And then putting the X's in it should give it some lateral. We'll see. Uh, first time doing this thing, so we'll see what happens. Um, all right, so I got the trailer in here. The first thing I do when I'm working on trailers is, before I touch anybody's stuff, I always check it for square and for level. I've kind of cranked this thing down and I'm already looking at it. Just with my eye, I can tell this trailer's bent. Um, 
Is it enough for him to worry about? Mm, I don't know. We'll see. Um, whenever you're checking something for square, especially a trailer, easiest way to check something for square, corner to corner. So you put your tape on one this far corner. Whoa, that's totally backwards in the camera. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so, you measure from this corner, diagonally to the other corner. Then you measure from that corner, diagonally to the other corner. Um, you do got to take in consideration, you got to measure the size of the trailer to make sure that they're even length. If you have one that's a foot longer, your diagonal will never line up to see if it's square. Um, as long as your edges are the same length, you pull corner to corner. Um, this is pretty much how you square up anything from framing to metalwork. Anything you want to square, you pull corners, uh, especially when it's this big. Um, that'll tell you if the trailer is square, if it's cattywampus, whatever you want to call it. Um, that'll be the first thing I do after I level it. So I'll put a level on this thing. I'm already looking at this trailer, like I got it jacked down pretty low. I can tell there's a bow in this trailer this way, just by eyeballing it. Um, that I'll probably never get out of it. Uh, there is ways to get that out if you really, really were anal about it. You could pie cut these sides to get this ends to pull back up, but I can definitely tell there's somewhat of a bow this way and it almost looks like there's a twist in it. Um, I'll talk to the customer before I do any work and let them know what I find. Once I pull corner to corner, I check level. Um, then we'll go from there. Uh, the, main, the main concern on this is the tongue um, and getting some reinforcements in the middle of this thing. Like I said, I'm going to try to exit through this section and then another one through this section in between this cross member and the one on the end where the uh, ramps are. We'll see if that gets it done. Um, if not, we'll have to look at some other options. But for right now, that's what we're going with. We're going to see if that does the trick. Uh, there's a lot of paint on this trailer too, so I'm going to have to figure out some way to get this paint off. I've got a couple different varieties of paint remover discs and flat discs, see what we can get off here because it has been on here a while. This trailer, see in a few days, you can see the fenders are a little bent up and stuff. I think eventually, someday, he's going to have me widen the back end of it because his Bronco actually overhangs these troughs where the tires would normally sit. Uh, he'll put smaller tires on it to get it in here. Bronco should come up to about this uh, cross member, um, which he's talking about cutting out. We'll see what happens once I reinforce this, if we can actually cut that out, or if we're gonna have to extend it all the way to these sides. So, kind of what we're looking at for this weekend uh, here in the shop. This is gonna be a little tricky one, we'll see. Uh, usually trailers that are people bring me are usually pretty beat up, pretty bent, twisted, whatever you wanna call it, and I usually get them pretty close. I'm never gonna say that they're perfect. The last one I had was about five and a half inches in this way from corner to corner. Uh, I got all of it out, but about a half an inch. So we did pretty good on the last one, but it was a lot of work. So we'll see how far he wants to take this one, how much money he wants to dump into it. Uh, I think his main concern is not really being square or out of flat. It's just the structural integrity of putting a full-size Bronco on this. So we'll see where we go from here and show you guys what happens. All right, so yesterday we started on this, uh, checking for squaring level. Um, kind of watched videos back last night and I noticed I messed up on a few things when I was talking. Uh, so I wanted to reiterate some stuff that I talked about here. So <clears throat> I misspoke when I talk about this here, I called this I-beam, it's actually C-channel, you can see it's a C, it's not an I. If it was an I, it would have pieces that came out off each side. Um, so I did mess that up. Uh, this is the exact same stuff that I'm going to make tongue out of <clears throat> after, oh, there's the new metal that I'm going to use, these are 20 foot lengths, I got three of them um, out of uh, my steel supplier out of Great Falls, they deliver it right to my house, pretty convenient for me, because um, I do live quite a ways out in the valley. Um, but anyway, so after I thought about this trailer last night, um, I talked about running X's through here to try to get some rigidity back. Um, you also heard me say that most tongues should not be built out of angle iron. Uh, you can do this. Uh, it's not the worst thing in the world, but like I said, it does give a little bit of wobble. Uh, the C channel is going to be way stronger. Um, 
or I-beam, uh, depending on which way you want to go with it. Um, but what I am going to do is, I do believe I'm going to tie into the outside of this tongue. I'm going to move all this brake control stuff because it doesn't work anyways. Um, so I'm going to run my C-channel out to this piece of C-channel here. And then I'm going to continue it on all the way to the fenders. I'll probably let it overhang half the width. I think this is an inch and a half going this way. So I'll do half that width overhanging so I can tie to the bottom and to the side all the way back to the fender here where this 3 8 is. And then I may run a support going this way. We'll see how rigid it starts getting it once I put this side on it. Um, most trailers you see have that. Uh, like I said, I'm guessing this was some kind of homemade trailer that somebody built. I don't think this was a store-bought unit or anything. Um, so that's what we're going to do, see if that gives a little more rigidity down this side and takes some of that flex away. I may still end up having to put an X somewhere in the middle there, or maybe some laterals going this way across it. Um, so that's what we're going to do. Um, I did talk to you guys about different grinding wheels and stuff to get this paint off. I actually purchased this guy from Home Depot, or not Home Depot, uh, Harbor Freight actually. Um, some of their grinding stuff's pretty good. Some of it's not the greatest. Um, I use a lot of flat discs here. Um, very rarely use actual grinding, grinding discs. Most time it's flat discs. Uh, the problem with flat discs with paint, um, especially this thick paint. I mean, you can tell this trailer's been painted a few times. It's flaking off. It doesn't like to come off very easy. So when you use a flap disc, just, you know, some rocked up paper, it clogs up the sandpaper pretty bad. Um, I know there's tricks out there where you can use like a wax bar and put it in, grind this uh, sanding wheel against the wax block and then it'll not stick the paint in there. It's a pain in the butt. Um, I did get... Like I said, this from Harbor Freight. Uh, when I bought it, it's not exactly the perfect size for my grinding grinder, so it's a, it's not a great scenario. Um, it does work really good though. I uh, tested it a little bit last night. You can see this is rusted and the paint is over it. It's a couple layers, dude. It took that stuff off in like just minutes. It it working really good. So I'll probably end up going and getting a few more of these so I can get all this paint off. Um, where I need to weld to because I don't know if any of you have tried to weld through paint. It doesn't work very good. Um, there's some weld through primers and stuff out there. I think Steel It makes some. A um, few other companies um, where you can actually spray paint on the paint and you can weld right through it as a weld through primer. Um, some of it might even be top coat stuff. Uh, I've never used any of it. I've just seen it online. Um, so you could look that up if you want, if you wanted to spray something and then weld through it. Uh, I just ground this off with that um, paint remover disc on my grinder, and it's working great. It's stripping it right off there, so I'll have a nice clean surface to uh, weld to when I start putting this tongue in. So that's kind of where we're at. Um, I'll get these side pieces made up here. Um, start recording again. So I went through. I ground off all the spots where I thought I was going to have to weld, just get rid of the paint, so I'm not trying to weld through the paint. Uh, it's not only not good to breathe, but it doesn't weld with a crud. So uh, I did it top and bottom, underneath, wherever it's going to touch. And then went down the side here, because I'm going to run channel all the way down to this fender. Um, and then I'll have support probably going across. Somewhere in here, one of these spots, um, try to give it some more rigidity in here um, but just tying into these sides should be pretty good but like I said I ground all the paint away I just kind of wanted to show you um, he's that Harbor Freight paint remover flap disc thing uh, I didn't do a whole lot but I don't know if you can tell it disintegrated pretty quick so that's a little disappointing it does work pretty good um, but these things are not like super cheap so I will probably look on Amazon, see if I can find the same thing, but in a better brand that doesn't break down quite as bad. Uh, I've noticed that with their flap disc from Harbor Freight. They do work. They just don't last as long as some, some of the better brands. Um, I'll kind of show you what I got if I have a Harbor Freight one. <clears throat> There's, no, that's not one either. 
Well, I was going to show you the difference, but these are the ones that I get. I get these off of Amazon. They seem to last pretty good. Uh, you get like a pack of 10 for like 23 bucks or something. Uh, they're pretty good ones. Um, this brand, uh, I'm not a sponsor or anything. I just, these are the ones that I use. Uh, they're pretty cheap. I get them off of Amazon in 10 packs. Uh, they come in all sorts of different grits. The only problem with them is they don't like to take paint off. They, the sandpaper just gets filled with paint and then it just doesn't work real great. But um, these are the ones I use, uh, four and a half inch. They seem to work really good. The ones from Harbor Freight, if you look at the thickness of this one, the ones from Harbor Freight are a lot thinner this way. And the sandpaper just seems to come off a lot quicker. They are quite a bit cheaper. Um, but when they don't last as long, I'd rather get a product that works a lot better. Uh, so they just last a little longer. I wanted to show you that. That's one that I tried to grind off some blue paint. You can see what it does. It just loads up and then they don't sand <laughs> very good at all. Um, but that's the same brand. You can see it just fills up with paint and then no sanding action happens after that. Yeah. I was hoping to have a Harbor Freight one so I could show you guys the difference, but um, there's, sorry, air compressor. It's got a automatic purge on it so it keeps my tank from rusting out. So yeah, if you're going to do it, uh, I would spend a little bit extra money and get a little bit better ones. Um, they just last longer, grind better. So, that's where we're at. Okay, I kind of want to show you guys what I got started here. So, um, I've got this one side on, um, as you can see. I've taken my C-channel, and I've ran it up to the tongue here, um, across the top or across the bottom. I'm not sure which way I'm going to plate, um, either right across here or underneath to tie the rest of this channel into this tongue to start getting it some strength. Um, you can see, I, I'll show you the other piece. I got both sides made, um, but it goes all the way across, ties into this other piece down here. Uh, what I did, so I took my C channel, cut it to my length, and then I had to cut this angle on it. Um, I just did it with my plasma cutter. Uh, ground it smooth so that it butts up with the four inch C channel underneath the trailer and on the other side You can see I had to taper it quite a bit To get it to kind of match up with the side of the tongue here. So essentially that's this cut right here um, I did kind of leave it open here on the ends um, That way I can uh, someday if this end of this hitch ever fails this part um, I can cut this back off so I can just come right through here with my cutoff wheel, cut this, cut the weld up here, and you, you can see someone has farmerized some welds on here pretty bad. Um, I'm probably going to end up cutting this plate off because it is pretty nasty welds. Uh, then I'll probably replate this whole thing all the way across, tying my two channels together across this angle iron tongue. But as you can see, the, the C channel has essentially wrapped around the end of this angle iron. Um, I'll weld it top and bottom. Uh, try to get some of this strength back in this tongue. Uh, it's tied in to the trailer there. It's a slight little gap here, so it made the tongue just a little bit wider. Uh, it shouldn't come in contact with this truck, though. Um, one thing you can notice is with the welds, uh, I would do a little bit at a time. Uh, that middle bead was pretty long, um, but I did two on each end and then one down the middle. I kind of jumped around as I welded. I welded a little here, then a little on the other side of it. Jumped back, let it kind of cool back and forth. Um, so now we're going to work on this other side. I got all the electronic stuff taken off for the brakes. So we'll get the other side of this tongue put in and we'll start working down the sides and putting our cross members in. Okay, so I wanted to show you guys this too. So I got this side welded on. This side I just kind of got clamped. Um, I'll show you what I did to get this kind of where I wanted it. So this is a tube that I had off an old fifth wheel hitch. Um, so I clamped that across the angle iron tongue. Um, both sides. Then I use this big clamp here to pull this up. Um, it was sagging a little bit because when you guys, when I first showed you this, remember how this trailer had a dip down on that side? And the, the tongue this way had just a little bit of a sag to it also. Um, so by putting these extra supports in with the C-channel, tying it back to this main support here, the C-channel underneath this plate, um, it's actually brought the trailer up 
Um, so before, you can see my level now is dead on, whereas it was sagging down on this corner over here. It was sagging down about a quarter inch in the front. Now it's actually pulled it up back level just by putting those C channels on the edge of the tongue. So you can already tell it's straightening this trailer out. Um, I don't have it totally together. It's still got a little bit of wobble. Um, like I said, I still have to run the pieces down the side, some cross members in this thing. See if we can get more of that wobble to go away, but it is definitely starting to stiffen up. So that's a good sign. All right, so I got the tongue pieces in. Uh, this is where the tongue ties into this uh, C channel. I went ahead and grinded, just ground this weld off. Uh, then I started making this piece. It's going to go right here. It's going to overhang just, I think it's three quarters of an inch because I went half. This is an inch and a half um, on the C, C channel part of it. So uh, I just think it looks cooler that way. Uh, it's not really any structural thing to it. I just like the way it looks. It just To me, it looks cool. Um, but in order to do this, uh, what I've done here, let's see if I can get it on camera. So this end, I've actually notched it on both sides to go around the other C-channel. And then if you can tell, I had to cut a triangle out of right here so I could fold this back. Because this tab that I've made, I've beveled both sides, um, the tab is pretty much going to be like a fish plate, but it's going to be part of this. So it'll fish plate to the tongue that I put in there. Um, I'll try to, oh, let me show you the other end too. So the other end, wah, I had to notch that because there's that piece of two by two, three eighths angle. So I'll scan down here and I'll show you why I did this. All right. Sorry, my phone ran out of storage, so I had to have my wife take a bunch of stuff off my phone so I could record again. Um, I did want to show you, so here's this essentially fish plate that I did. So here's the tongue coming in. I overlapped it so that this joint on the corner is really strong. Um, you can see we got our three quarter lip. I just think it looks cool. Um, one thing I did want to point out, you see how my welds are staggered? They called this a stitch weld. You don't really need to weld all the way down every single seam. Uh, just it causes too much distortion um, so they call it stitch weld so pretty much what I did I took that overall distance I started I put three inches there three inches down there on the other end divided this in half and I put one in the middle divided that section in half and I put a three inch weld in between each one so it's staggered um, a lot of structural stuff you'll see they'll do three inch here and then on the back side in this gap they'll do a three inch weld on the back side so what that'll do is as your heat is going through your weld it'll keep your panel from or your metal or whatever you're doing from doing this and twisting or bowing this way um i only put them on the outside um underneath here this whole corner is welded out from the bottom um overhead welding uh no welder's favorite thing to do um so I did get it all welded out and then same thing down here where the fender hits this two by two by three eighths. It's welded all the way around um, just because this is the only structural piece going across the trailer. So we got all that done. Um, I'm working on the other side. I kind of wanted to show you guys. Let me walk over here and we'll kind of show you what I did here. So this is the opposite piece. I was trying to find a good way to explain how I did this. Um, so essentially, this is the piece running horizontally right there on the trailer. So I showed you how I had that, there was a flap that folded down to here. So this is essentially what I got underneath the trailer. This piece sits about right there. And that goes horizontally across the trailer. You're looking from the top of this piece of metal down. So if that's sitting right there, I made these kind of pink lines so you can see this is the flap. 
that is going to fold this way to here to make that angle. And hopefully you can kind of see this. So this is my three quarter inch line here. And it comes back. And this is a triangle I cut out right here. So all this black area is what's going to get cut out. So my channel can sit right here, which is an inch and a half from this mark to this mark. So that this flap right here can fold flush and tie into my tongue over here. I'm hoping I'm explaining that well enough. That's it, it's it was hard for my brain to understand when I did it. I'm trying to show you guys what I actually did to make this happen. Like I said, this is a little triangle that I have to cut out to make this flap fold down to tie in with my tongue. Um, once I get this cut out, I'll try to get a video of it cut out so maybe it makes a little more sense and I'll get a video of me essentially hammering this down to here so that I can make the weld right here. Um, yeah, <laughs> kind of hard to explain, it's kind of hard to visualize. Uh, took me a little bit to figure out how I was actually going to make this tie into the tongue with this flap or what I was calling a fish plate here to tie into the tongue because this will actually totally be gone from here up. Um, yeah, essentially from like right there, my inch and a half mark going that way, that will all be gone from here over. And that's what creates my fish plate when this ties to here. This little triangle you see right in here is actually the tongue of the trailer. And that's my C channel. So it ties into my C channel. This folds over, comes down to my tongue. And that's the little triangle I have to cut out, then I have to re weld that seam. And then if you flip this, you can see I got it marked out here where I essentially cut this or dovetailed it or notched it, whatever you want to call it, for my fish plate. And it'll bend from here back because this is where my C channel will be underneath the trailer so essentially if you're looking at it that's what it'll look like that c channel will be here but this section will be folded back because this is obviously underneath of it so hopefully that explains it a little better i'll get another video of it when i cut it out so you guys can actually see what i did and re relate it back to the drawing i just did or the the layout i just did on the metal um it is a little complicated for I guess if it's do if you're doing it your first time and you're not sure which way the metal moves or what you're trying to accomplish. So try to lay it out the best I could so you guys could kind of see like those whitish pink lines. Uh turned out whitish pink. This is actually purple. That purple marker right there. And this is actually a silver marker. So I was trying to get it so you could see that that piece will fold to here, but that chunk will be gone right there. And that's where the tongue ties into. So you can see the fish plate overlaps the tongue coming in on the trailer. Okay, so I got this cut out. I just wanted to show you guys what it looked like. So as you can see, you have a notch for your C channel. This flat piece is going to bend down to match this angle, which is the angle of my tongue. And then I'll have my fish plate on the end of it. So I'll weld this seam, the one on the bottom. And then this will be welded to the tongue that's already tied into the C channel underneath this angle iron. So now you can kind of see, like, I, I laid it out, but now you can actually see with it cut out. Once this, I'll use this pen, this is this piece, it's going to fold to there. Then you can see in that notch, that's where the C channel will sit. Then this piece will tie into the tongue. That's why you have this fish plate, because it ties that right into the tongue. Okay, so I wanted to show you how I lay this out so you can see the X's. I have a clamp whoop, right there because you guys saw in the video before this trailer has a bow. So I'm trying to pull a little bit of that bow out. Hopefully when I weld, stitch weld this, it'll start pulling this trailer up. It's already looking way better than when it came in this tra into the shop. Um, but I do want to show you how I laid this out. So I got my three inches of weld here. Now my gap. Three inches of weld, three inches of weld, gap all the way down. And then over here, I'm going to put three inches here, 
gap three inches here. Um, like I said before, you don't need to weld the trailer all the way out. It's just going to cause tons of distortion. It's not needed. Um, but I will weld up underneath this angle iron all the way through um, to give this trailer some structure. Because honestly, right now, this trailer, it still has a little bit of wobble. But since we put that side in, the other side, and the tongue supports up there, this trailer now is not flexing in up here from end to end it was just wobbly now this is starting to stiffen up a little bit so i was going to originally do x's through here we're going to see once i get this side piece all welded out how stiff this trailer actually is whether i need to do that or not i may just run some laterals going sorry across this way the end is still a little wobbly um, so we'll see how that goes. I might end up putting an X this way. We'll see what happens once I get this in. This front is already like stiffening up big time. I'm honestly really surprised that it worked that well. But it did, so that's a good thing. All right, I gotta, I gotta show you guys this. So we put the side in over there, both tongue supports. And I have the side in over here also. See, I stitch weld this side also. Um, the crazy thing I wanted to show you guys, so I kind of thought this was going to happen, but I didn't want to be like preemptive about it. If you look at it, that bubble is almost dead center. This thing was diving off this way towards this corner. So by putting those side supports in, and clamping the trailer to those side supports, putting the tongue supports in, it's actually raised this corner right here. Hold it back up straight. So that's what I was kind of going for. I was hoping it was gonna straighten it out. Uh, I didn't want to tell you guys preemptively, but it actually did work. Uh, it pulled that whole corner of that trailer back up flat. I'm not gonna say this trailer's still flat, but it's a heck of a lot better than when it showed in because that corner was down at least a quarter inch, maybe even three eighths. And now it's damn near flat across the front. So that's a good thing because there's not a whole lot of trailer in here. We're gonna add a few more supports. I might even still put the X in. Uh, it's, it's funny now that I put all this in, when you step on the corner of the trailer, this part that used to wiggle differently than the back, this is all pretty stout right here now. The wiggle, it moves together, kind of like that, whereas before it was just a floppy noodle. So it's getting there. We're going to put in a few more supports, try to get this thing where it's going to support the weight of that Bronco. <clears throat> okay, I wanted to show you guys this. So I'm going to add this support at the end of the side pieces that, so the tongue comes down, side pieces come down. I'm gonna put a cross brace right there. There is that, uh, it's like two by two by three eighths angle. I'm gonna put a brace right there. Uh, the trailer's stiffened up a heck of a lot. The whole front end is like, it's actually moves as one piece now. Um, the end of the trailer still has a little bit of wobble to it. Uh, it's not that bad. Um, honestly, I think my flat deck trailer has about what this one does uh, and it's, fully boarded with two by six treated lumber. But I did want to show you this. So when you're putting in a cross piece up against this, as you can see, there is a gap. So real easy way to notch this, figure out your notch, I guess you could say. Take your piece of, your small piece, line up the inside edge of this with the edge of your cross member, and then just trace it. Gives you a really good, easy line then you can cut it out however you want, cut off wheel. I'm going to use a plaz and then kind of grind it smooth and then weld it in from there. Um, but this is kind of where, what I'm going to do to get this notch like real easy. So I laid my piece in there. See, I trace it with my marker. And, wow. Now you have your lines that you can just cut out. Um, 
this seems to be the easiest way I found. Uh, I'm just going to notch that with my plaz. I've seen other people, they'll like cut it with a cutoff wheel or a chop saw. Not really at a 45, but just run their chop saw blade like right here. It's not the greatest fitment. You're kind of filling a gap with your welder. Uh, I'm not really okay with that. I would rather it fit really snug so I know I have good penetration on both sides of this piece and the piece I'm welding to. I want that to be a really good fit. Um, you know, a lot of pipe welders, uh, if they have a pipe fitter that leaves a gap, they're not happy. And I'm kind of that guy. I'm a little bit, uh, I guess you could say, anal about it. I want it to fit really snug so that I know that I'm getting penetration on both sides of my weld from this piece to this one. Um, so I'm pretty sure this is going to be pretty snug. I might have to tap it in with a hammer. Um, that means it'll be strong. Okay, so, jeez. All right, so I wanted to show you this. So I cut this out with my plaz, took my grinder with my rock up paper and I knocked the ugly off of it. Um, so that this will fit in there very nicely. Um, there's just a slight gap around it. Um, that's actually pretty good for your weld to get good penetration. Um, it's a little looser than I would like. Um, nothing that, you know, when I'm putting the weld in there that it won't fill in. Uh, the good thing about it is it'll get really good penetration on both sides. But like I said, normally I like it a little bit tighter than that. Um, but this should work pretty good. But you can see how easy that was. I just hit it with my plaz, grinded it down a little bit. Um, one thing I will tell you... Sorry, that was probably really loud. When you're going through this web, let me put you this way. When you're going through this web, you can see this is angled. So this cut right here is significant for, I have a 375 Extreme plasma cutter. It said it'll shear up to 5 8 um, That is a pretty good cut for that thing. Um, so when I go through it, I make sure when I'm running my plaz, that I'm angled this way. And when I come to the corner, I slow way down and I'm always forcing it towards the middle this way to make sure it gets through this because it is pretty thick there for that 375. Um, it does do it, a uh, little bit of cleanup, but it is fairly significant. I bet it's three eighths right there in the corner. If you're coming from here to that side, it's got to be at least three-eighths of an inch. So keep that in mind when you're coming around the corner, make sure you're always facing to the middle to knock that out. <clears throat> All right, I didn't uh, record this while I put it in, but um, I did put a plate across the bottom of this tongue. As you can see, it's a pretty big plate. Um, still a little bit of wobble in this tongue, so I put that across there trying to stabilize it a little more. Uh, it's helping. Uh, there is still just a little bit of wobble in this trailer. Um, as you can see, this is a pretty good shot. You can see the pieces I added all the way down the sides, and there's a cross member across there. So the front of this trailer is pretty stout. I think a lot of it's coming from this tongue. Uh, somebody's hacked on it pretty bad. Oh. I don't know if you can see this, but somebody's really hacked out a good section of that center. Contemplating cutting that that cleaning all this up and replating it um see if we can get this jack to stabilize a little more but i think a lot of it's coming from there um you can see it still has a little bit of a wobble but it's heck of a lot better than it was it's way more stout um before you do that and that trailer was just noodly at least now it's kind of moving together so i think a little bit of that's the suspension and some of it's his tongue being hacked out like that um yeah that's kind of where we're at um probably i'm contemplating putting that x in there uh i don't know i'd like to really run that channel from here all the way down the side um but like i said before right about there this trailer is bent down um so trying to pull that back to the c channel a lot of metal. 
I don't know. We'll see, but that's what I'm kind of contemplating because then it'll be supported by that new piece of I-beam I put in there. This piece of I-beam, and then it'll run back. I added another one back here. Um, I didn't record this earlier when I put it in, but I put this one across the back where the, um, the ramp pockets are, and it goes from one side to the other. I also had to fix this. <laughs> Sorry, fix that piece of angle iron right there. Uh, went to pull the ramps out and it was actually busted off that side it wasn't even doing anything um so i just kind of went to bend it up to look at it because it was actually this whole thing was bent went to pull it up and this weld on the side just snapped off so i cleaned everything up re-welded it on there i straightened the piece of angle iron the best i could um just put it in the vise kind of beat on it with a hammer and it straightened out for the most part the ramp still fit in there real good um but the back side of this trailer is actually it's helped out quite a bit. Now you see most of the, let me see if I can try to get this. Not really. But when you step on it, the trailer actually bounces like this together. A lot of this has went away. So um, that's a good thing. It's, you can see how it, let me back up a little more. Go ahead, do it again, Dylan. You can see how the trailer bounces together now instead of doing a lot of this. It still has a teeny bit of this, but compared to where it was, this thing is a hundred times better already. Um, and at least we know with the C-channel in there, it'll support the weight of that Bronco. We're back on this trailer again today. Uh, I didn't work a whole lot on it yesterday. Probably had, I don't know, three, four hours in it. Um, but this morning I came out here. Uh, this trailer still had a little bit of wobble, so we're trying to get the rest out of it. So you can see I've added this C-channel across, corner to corner. We're gonna try to get rid of the rest of it. Um, not all of it, as much of it as possible. Um, so you can tell that's tied. That C-channel to the one we've added and the one on the other end down there. Um, I did wanna show you this. So when I was cutting for all my laterals going across the trailer, I don't have a piece that'll actually span from there all the way across. But I do want to make this easy on myself. Um, you can see there's a split right there in the middle. Um, I do got to cut. I'll have to cut this right here so it matches up. Then I'll have to cut and notch this side to go inside the channel that way. But the main reason I clamp this together is, so now I line it up on my marks where I want to weld it on there, weld it on there, and here. And I just take my Sharpie. I just draw my line under it so I know where my cut's at because I know these two pieces are now lined up right where I want. So I'll cut this one, then I'll set this one up. Sorry, I'm a little too close. I'll set this other piece back up to where it butts up here. Then I can mark for my notch here and I can mark my angle real easy. So it just made it easier for me to mark it instead of having to do it a bunch of measuring and stuff. So like I said, just clamp those two together so I can span where I want this to line up and that to line up. Then I can just come back through and mark the bottom. Then I'll come over here, mark the bottom. Then I have my cuts. Then I can get this first piece put in. Then I'll line the second piece up with that squared it. Um, then I can mark it and cut it. All right, uh, I wanted to show you guys. I still gotta clean up obviously, but I think I'm pretty much done here. I think I've done as much as I can to this trailer to try to get the rigidity back in it. Um, I know the strength is there now, especially with these right here, these side pieces, um, and the cross member going that way and back there. Uh, the X I put in there just to try to get rid of a little bit more of this wobble. I'll try to jump on this and show you guys. I mean, it it is a heck of stout now. Um, so we'll see if the cat, customer's happy with it. Um, if he wants to take any further, the chances of all this wobble going away are pretty slim, but for the majority of what was the problem is now eliminated. So um, if it was my trailer, I'd be happy with it right now. Uh, I will tell you the level across here um, has turned out great. That whole corner that was down over here is now up flat. Um, pretty much from here back to the front tires is really level again, um, going that way. It still dives off there. Like I said, there was a half an inch of that. I got a little bit of it out by putting this X in and tying it to that back cross member. It's not all the way out. Um, like I said, it's 
half an inch it's pretty hard to pull out that distance um there's some ways i could deal with it but for the most part i'm not really too concerned about it and i, I know he's not um i've kind of talked to him about it he knew this trailer had a little bit of an issue with it um but i do want to tell you too these were actually leaned like that on both sides like the trailer was collapsing in on itself by putting in this cross member right here it has really pulled those back up and I have one on the back of the axles too back here and it's really pulled those up flat um, now when you look down this trailer it doesn't look twisted this way and the it's really hard to see the bow this way now um, before when it walked when I rolled it in here um, you could totally see this thing was bent and taco twisted whatever you want to call it it was iffy uh, at best um, especially if he's going to be putting the weight of that full-size Bronco on there. Uh, I think this year he's actually cut out a lot of the sheet metal out of his Bronco, trying to lighten it up so it goes faster. Uh, we'll see how much weight he's lost, but this trailer should be able to handle it. I mean, I, I honestly wouldn't be afraid to put a Bobcat on this thing. Um, it should be pretty stout now. Um, I did want to show you one other thing. So this, where this X meets... I was telling you guys about how you notch it using your your smaller piece and just tracing around it. When you're coming into an angle like this, this whoop, this tab on the end here, it actually has to be. Come on, phone, focus. Sorry, phone wouldn't focus. Uh, that tab actually needs to be longer than just the inch and a half because you're coming into at it at an angle. You can see this is, has an angle. The other thing about it is, <coughs> sorry, um, when you do make this, this distance here, like I said, that tab's got to be longer, and this is cut at an angle now because you're coming into this other angle, uh, so you do got to kind of watch that. Um, I couldn't really find a good way to explain it other than just showing you guys. Uh, like I said, that tab's got to be longer than just using... Because if you see, if I if I would line this up right there, I still have like an extra three quarters of an inch that I have to go past to make sure it ties into the other part of the uh, C channel good. Uh, if I would have just done the normal tab, I would have been short. Um, if you do do that, there is a few things you can do. You can actually just beat that this piece back till it touches here. So you essentially weld these out and then just take your hammer and beat this back till it lines up. Um, the nice thing about making the tab long is when you're over the top of it, your your tab actually falls right down your line and ties right into here. So it makes a really good, strong joint right there at the X. So keep that in mind when you're going to do that. If you're coming into an angle with C-channel, that tab does need to be longer. Um, it's going to vary depending on the angle that your piece is coming in at. If it's not as, I guess, steep as this one is, if it's more this way, your tab will be shorter. Obviously, the closer you get back to 90, the easier it is to use your scrap piece as your template. But once you start coming to an angle, that tab's got to get longer or you got to bend the tab back. Uh, I like them running straight just so the thickness of this is tying in with the thickness of this one. So keep that in mind when you're doing it. And also, that's got to be an angle. It can't be straight off like as if you're coming in at a 90. All right, I think that's all I got for you. I think this thing's a wrap. I'm going to clean up now that I've got almost every one of my tools strung out across my shop. Um, once I get to going, you can see I uh, just kind of leave stuff laying where it's at. Just a little bit of mess. Half the time I can't find what I need then. Um, most of my stop stuff has a spot in my shop that's hanging up. I can visually look over and see if it's gone or not. Um, but then this happens. I get to work in and stuff just seems to be everywhere. So we'll get all this picked back up, put back in its uh, correct spot so I know where it is for next project that I got to do.